So this is uh, wrapping up sign up for the White Marlin Open. We're gonna have a captain's meeting in a little bit. We got an incredible forecast. We're fishing on the center console for a change. Uh, you know, usually there's a tropical depression or a hurricane spinning out there. Right now we have like two footers at 11 seconds for the week. We're gonna be going fast, burning dinosaurs. Hopefully coming in with a big fish. And uh, you know, just high hopes coming in with the bite going off uh, towards the end of last week. Uh, hopefully we can find them boat that we're in, we are poised as good as anybody to be able to run around and find ponds of fish and you know, hopefully bring them to the boat, do well in the releases and pick up a big one. So our game plan day one is going to be to push out to the deep. Where have these fish been for the last three days and how can we get on them? We're going to go out there and see if we can get in on the numbers game like knock the skunk off the boat, and then we'll make a plan from there. So we're gonna go out um, really outside the Baltimore Canyon. Drew's gonna have the right flat, Doc's gonna have the left. And something a little unique that we found in, in pre-fishing was that we really couldn't see the long baits. And we didn't have a great place to put them where somebody could be right on them. So I'm gonna sit up top on the roof and have the rods right in front of me to where I can react to a bite very quickly and make sure we don't miss any fish that we might get. We might not see them on the long baits, but at least we're gonna be ready when they do bite. The setup worked perfectly. Um, the little bite indicator went off. I had the rod in my hand before the line got tight. We fed that fish and, and we were off to the races with sailfish hooked up. We just need to go run it down. So now we push in shore. It's about one o'clock. We're trolling around on the flat there on the north, northeast corner of the Baltimore. And boom, another long rigger bite. Um, you know, again, the, the booby track worked great, man. The clip popped. We had them fed and um, ended up coming tight on it. And it just, it worked out great. Got the rod handed off the dock and uh, we had a fish on. And it was a uh, target species this time. And um, you know, got them up to the front of the boat and made short work of that fish. Wasn't a very big one, but it was target species and we were on the board. So, you know, some confidence. We caught two fish, two for two. Um, you know, that's what it was all about. We're out there catching fish. We felt confident in what we were doing. So I'm forcing the guys, I'm like, you need to put a plug out, slide a plug out. And everyone's like, do not put the plug out. The white marlins are gonna go to the plug. I was like, I know, but I just wanna catch a blue marlin because that's all we wanna do is catch a blue marlin. So we're plodding along in shore. We're about five hours into our day at this point, and you, you know, We've got a fish, so everybody's on point, but it's still, you're, you're grinding, you're getting tired. And there was a massive explosion and swipe behind the right teaser that set everybody into action. We're pulling on the teaser and it just, you couldn't even move the teaser before that fish had spun back around and just annihilated the plug, popped the clip and dumped the 80. First thing I did was run to the rod and just bumped the drag into the right position and told the boys to start clearing everything and all that mattered. I was like, cut the dredges, do it. I didn't care what we did other than go chase down that fish. The 
which point we all sprung into extreme panic and action. We're just going nuts, trying to get ready to get this fish next to the boat. Here she comes tail walking next to the boat. I mean, it's a really nice fish, it's a legal fish. We're in the tournament. This fish is worth potentially $3 million. I mean, this is what we're here to do. So we've got everything set. You know, Drew's been on, on the rail for quite a while. We've got a pretty good idea of, of how we're gonna try and bring this fish up and kill it. Nick's gonna drive the boat. Doc's gonna be the wire man. And, um, you know, I've got the, the giant back scratcher in my hand, the flyer, and we're gonna try and stick this fish as it comes up. And, you know, the, just the anticipation builds. It seems like every five minutes, he'll come up and it'll dump again. But every time he comes up, he gets a little bit closer. So at some point, about, you're about 15 minutes out and you know that, like, it's getting close and then the anxiety starts to set in. It's like, man, we've never done this before. Are we gonna be ready? Am I not gonna screw up this gaff shot? Is Doc gonna not you know, get pulled over the boat when he wires the fish? I mean, just all these things running through your mind. And um, you know, it's just time progressed. And sure enough, next thing you know, the fish is up at the boat and it's game time. So one of the things going through our mind as this fish is coming up is there's a 114 inch minimum qualifying length for the White Marlin Open that we need to, to satisfy. But regardless, this fish is coming up. It is a legal kill size fish at any day of the year. It's not just a tournament stipulation around size. So we're trying to really triangulate how big this fish is. I am beside myself nervous because like I said, you, you don't practice this stuff. You're ready to go and I come up and I reach and just miss. The fish is just a little bit too deep. My arms are a little bit too short didn't work out. They bring him up a little more, reach over, and he just shakes it off. Like, hit him in the side, he just shook it right off, right up over his dorsal, and then the last shot I have is like back third, and I wasn't gonna be the guy that ended up missing a gaff shot, and the fish got away. I stuck him where I could get him, and it was like a rodeo after that. Just a special experience catching a Grand Slam in a center console in the White Marlin Open. It's a great experience and you know something that we'll probably never repeat, but uh, one of those things that we'll remember and one of those memories you make with, with friends for a lifetime.